Hello, everyone. I want you to walk with me into the eyes of a Native American boy back in the time where that had real meaning. And you would see that we are walking in a forest and advised by our elders to individually go. So we are just this one, one kid who is just told to go and explore life. Now's the time. And all that we have been told is to listen to the earth. The earth will tell you where to go and what experience to see if you are. So as we begin walking, we begin to see that there is a silence in all of nature's movements. And we are between, between mighty trees and animals. And so there's such intelligence in every movement of life. And we're walking. Now as we walk, we begin to go into a very vast field. And as we go into this field, there comes a moment where for an instant something within us tells us to bow down. And we, we do not bow down to something. We simply kneel on one leg and with both hands touch the earth. And as there is a moment where this intuitive calling has told you to touch the earth, you are feeling the surface of reality. You are feeling your life. And then the ground begins to shake. The ground begins to communicate. The earth begins to speak back. You see, it's, it's as if there's, there's a great movement. Something's moving beyond this stillness and immediate reality that once confronted. And so as, as your hand is on, on, on the surface, on the ground, you immediately lift up your head. And in, in the distance that is very close to you in many ways, a group of wild horses are just running and these horses are big and so you're just standing there in the might of the silence which welcomes all noise and you see these horses pass you by wild horses most abstract ideas chaotic visions and you are still remaining there and you will see that there's a clarity in the movements of this existence, the movements of this life and nature that are just like one horses. So once you absorb it, you observe it, you are in a sense taken into the peak of that experience. So in other words, your experience of, of a being present in a reality, looking at image and form becomes one where you are a complete abstraction of all that form uh, in a sense an ability that no ability can shape or challenge. It is the ultimate ability. It is the ultimate reality. It is the moment where you are found. In nothing. <laughs> <clears throat> Therefore, to continue our hand has gently come off. And the dirt on our hand is just memories of so a magnificent vision. And so the clarity of wild horses has become not just that experience, not just that idea, not just that imagery of the move, greatest movements of nature, but the understanding that we are present among great movements. We are present among great men, among greatness, and the potentiality of the absolute experience of being. It is only uh, a man covering his eyes with ideology that cannot move out of those structures. And so the unstructured is not something that is logical, that is rational. It is that chaotic observance of all man is you are keeping order for yourself. It is an aspect of your own intelligence which communicates to you as, as in the sense of a new dimension of experience. So your knowing is not based on form. It's like you, you are no longer requiring images, but you are vast observance. And an advanced communicator is reborn into his knowing of his immediate origin.
as we, as this boy, Native American kid, walk back to our city. We are no longer the same person. We recognize that life is communicating great things and it is our gentleness to observe it that really is treasurable. It, it, it's where the treasure is revealed. So it's like there are some gifts that you get on Christmas and there are some gifts that are just your, your opening to a greater experience of experiencing life. And that is an area and range where certain people will be coming in the, in the sense that they are advanced communicators. They are pilots of consciousness. When they walk, they are a communicator to all reality. So if this individual was present, if the pilot of consciousness or the realized advanced communicator is present, he does not speak. He is that which all reality speaks to. He is, he is the keeper of a sense of multidimensional awareness in which many potentials of reality are just happening by his mere presence. In the sense that his walk is one where every being that observes is no longer there. It is an emptiness in, in presence, but an absolute expression of a multi-dimensional limitless sky. We will see that when every individual's awareness expands, and they are becoming more selfless and compassionate, so suddenly their nature is becoming gentle, is that they are becoming more, it's not that they're gentle, it's just that they're more uh, deeper into their internal dimensions. So when you become extremely compassionate and gentle, like, a, like let's say a Zen master or a Buddha type person, you know, you will realize it is because your awareness to your internal dimensions is, has just grown, has expanded. And so you are, you are gentle. You, you see the significance is not in how the materiality is being kept in a temporal relationship by your idea of you, but actually to observe that life is life beyond interpretation. That there's a chaos that smiles within the design that makes the branches of a tree shout. Nature is never late, and you must have faith in many winds that are there. And so as the individual's consciousness expands, he finds himself in a greater flow of presence. So his, he becomes more of a beautiful moment of being rather than just the body in the being, you know? And it, 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 it becomes as if you're no longer even seeing ideology. Ideology has simply just been, it's in a different room. Trust me. The sensitivity and this peacefulness, it's just that it's in a different room. It is your lack of awareness to what within means for you that you are not perceiving the relationship of your externality originating from your eyes. It actually does originate from your eyes, but it is not something which your eyes are touching. So it is an untouched exploration of all that you know you are now. <laughs> And all of this playfully suggests that the clarity of wild horses is you need to be sincere and humble enough for yourself to look at nature and look at life and sometimes see that they speak beyond books. Nature speaks beyond, you know, uh, theories. It gives you it. It's always giving it. So what that means is that, for example, that person telling you how you should be a good person, you know, was perhaps not being a good person. And so that means is that illusion is simply the plateau of awareness you have to how reality is kept for you. You must realize that your knowing originates within you because when you look at it, it is everywhere or nowhere. <laughs> you will see a beauty in the elegance of how you observe space and time in the sense that you are no longer searching for something. The seeker has dissolved into his uh, into his ability to uh, completely accept the limitation and then to see the limitless. 
So it is very important that the idea of collective consciousness becomes interesting and through a very self-discovery way. Life is really a journey and they don't emphasize, emphasize this enough. What that means is that you should not try to ignore death. Death needs to inspire your life. And what that means is that you're seeing, okay, you know, in my, in my, I don't need any parent or any guru to tell me. I am looking at death and it is telling me that every moment is a value to be acknowledged fully. And so how fully am I paying attention to my moment? How fully am I observing different aspects of my being? Am I stuck in this battle of trying to fight with ideology? When ideology is empty because it is my eyes that looks at the idea in the first place. Who it is that is conceiving the moment and it is simply the dissolution of the question. You walk with an unnamed emptiness and you will see it is that ability and the greatest lesson that the Native American boy could have learned in, in observing wild horses is that that intensity, after it is observed, it is present in man. After I have spoken, the words are present. And so are you. And it is beyond the distinctions of, it, it is beyond the dualistic thing. In other words, if you're still looking for good and bad, you're playing in the beautiful game that the plane of existence has provided you. But your awareness to your plane of existence requires you be, uh, go, checking the etymology of yourself. Where do all your ideas and words and names come from? How, what was the expression of your being if you could, if, if, before you even know how to speak? What do your eyes see when you observe them? When you observe how you're aware to the moment which you exist, regardless of how much you think, you're still present. Do not be convinced by a thinker. When you, when you try to find, look at the thinker, you cannot find it. So the uh, measurement is actually the accepting of the illusion. Those people who measure things too much, they are, this is in a sense, of course, in an abstract and deep existentially contemplative way. So, um, in other words, acknowledge it in that context. <laughs> so you see that it's, it's very important because you, when you accept measurement, when you accept measurement, you are agreeing with something that is there, which it is not you. So you're agreeing to an other sense of other when the actuality of how you're present is with a sense of self. So what that means is that when man asks a very big question, what is, what is beyond man, where do I come from? The universe answer. But it also said that to find this answer, this answer cannot be heard by a man. So in other words, you will know of man when you are no longer man because you are the observance of man. So now we understand the intensity of these wild horses shaking the earth in regards to how our truths can in an instant dissolve into the absolute knowing that is unspeakable and should be unspeakable. Your internal dimensions are for you. That is why they are your internal dimensions. External reality is a choice because you will eventually see that what's the purpose of me being alive? To choose something. So you will see that uh, it, is, it is a game of free will, externality, but it, it still doesn't mean you're not free in your internal dimensions. Think of simultaneous realities even. Man can only touch this concept when he has understood the true value of nothing. That is when a multidimensional sense of reality becomes real for you in the sense that you do not touch it, but you allow that internal dimension to communicate your externality. So what that means is you become a, you become a transparent lens in which all lights are allowed and present to. So in other words, once you are no longer trying to keep yourself healthy by trying to make yourself to a certain image, you, you see simply where your body is going. Oh, don't trust me, the mind of man uh, knows that it, its heart keeps beating. <laughs>
So it's as if there's, a, there's this intelligence within our system that is guiding us. So that even if I was, a, a bit, let's say, unconscious, I would still know where I would go. You know, so it, it is that sense. And you see states of mind and states of being are nothing to joke with, joke, uh, joke with or to not take seriously. You must become serious. You must have the intensity of, and the elegance of the Zen master's silence, you know, and stillness. You must, you must have the ability of a gentle human being to dissolve into the knowing that is life. And then you will become the instrumentation for your multidimensionality. So what that means is that it's like you can when you're in this part, when you haven't gotten on the roller coaster yet, you can you will not have that ex multidimensional experience. But when you are in it, you cannot explain it to the person who's not in it. So what that means is do not be lost in how you're interpreting communication to then judge yourself. Be aware of nature's communication that is present through you, within you, that is present through all things. Even though man has created a language to then create a concept as unnatural, there is nothing unnatural. It all naturally existed and naturally exists. <laughs> Regardless of man's interpretation of nature, because Eternal image has no color. <laughs> As we walk back and we have sat by the fire and our elders ask us, did nature talk to you? We do not say a single thing, but just look at them in silence and all the elders will smile because they, they'll, be, they'll know that this kid has seen wild horses. <laughs> and it is very important for you to have the clarity of wild horses as well, to see what the greatest movements, greatest, most valuable things happening around you in your proximity are. If today was your last day, are you close to even uh, being in, in where your dream is to be? You know? You must get so intense with yourself that you do not have just the greatest generals of man's, uh, you know, of humankind, you know, you don't have their, intensity, just their intensity, but you have the clarity of natural direction and natural direction is untouchable because it is the allowance of the untouched, it is that presence of expression. For once man bows down to the beauty of the existence of his moment. All existence has bowed down to him. <laughs>